Remember how some YouTube channels used to have videos where they'd open and just say, like this video in the next 5 seconds or some eldritch god will eat your dog? I'm not here to insult your intellect, so let's start with something a bit more challenging. Rather than liking this video now, I want you to go to the funny hexagon website and search for the name of your favorite Pokemon. Now some of you are probably thinking, Benji, how many screws do you have loose? And honestly, that's the exact reaction I wanted. I'm sure most in the fandom are probably aware that the site E621 is a place known for furry content that would probably earn you a permanent side eye from your family, pet specifically. A place where you can see original and childhood characters alike do everything under the sun. Definitely not a place for minors, mind you, but as someone who is unfortunate enough to make a E6 account at the ripe, totally legal age of just 15, some might try to slip their way in. But if this site happened to be your first glimpse into the furry fandom, I can't blame you if you believe that the fandom was about sex and not much else. Much like any other fandom, the furry fandom's purpose isn't for sexual material exclusively. However, the furry fandom is one so large that comparing it to other fandoms feels almost unfair in the grand scale of things. Kind of like comparing a wolf to a... a pug. So I simply decided to ask the question on Twitter and YouTube. Would you say the furry fandom is overflowing with not safe for work or sexual content, or is it just fine in your eyes? On Twitter, the numbers were pretty even, opposed to YouTube where there's a much larger lean towards yes. In the comments, it gave a somewhat expected mix of ideals. On Twitter, a majority of users found it bearable, with some acknowledging that a big issue with this content is when it gets exposed to those who don't want to or shouldn't see not safe work material. Because if you aren't actively looking for it, that would be one of the only ways you'd come across the content. Users being irresponsible or malicious with where they place their smut. Along with mentions of content curation, there were those who brought up sexual content being a part of the fandom's roots. How furry was born as a weird sex thing. Something I feel doesn't translate too well into modern day, where members of the fandom focus more on sexual positivity than they do constant horn dogging. I mean, it's about 50-50, but still. The furry fandom has a rather large overlap with a multitude of other communities, one of those being the LGBT. The LGBT consists of a wide spectrum of sexualities, asexuals like myself being included in that. So while others can fully embrace the sexual portion of the fandom, that portion is so large to the point that furries who are sex repulsed asexuals or don't want to see any furry fornication time after time again are kind of exposed to it regardless. I mean, just searching hashtag furry on a Twitter account that has no follows gave me some not safe work art as opening result. Couple that with the occasional SFW furry who retweets or uses pictures of softcore fetish material and that leaves you with the perfect cocktail for inescapable fetish and sexual material. Now from this, you might think that I'm against furries creating this kind of material. That's not exactly the case other than a few exceptions at least. Cub, Zophilia, Necrophilia, everything this stands for. There shouldn't be an absolute purge of not safe word content, like what Tumblr did and what OnlyFans tried to do at one point. There also shouldn't be a complete purge of minors in the fandom because a select few in the fandom lack the ability to keep it in their pants and be normal functional people for long enough. I think that there should be a more defined divide between the safe for work and the not safe for work. Disclaimers such as placing in your bio that your account isn't for minors, and going on to block minors that you notice follow or look at your not safe for work content. While that really does anything in the long run with alt accounts and age faking being a thing, it is some sort of an effort at the end of the day. Regardless, let's say for the sake of the argument, I did want to eliminate any and all public sexual content in the fandom by any means necessary. Well, then you might think of me as someone following the Burned Furs Manifesto. If you aren't familiar with the Burned Furs, I do recommend checking out the video on them done by Mishibi Barkin. It goes much further in depth than I probably will here. But to give you a small little summary, the Burnt Furs were a group founded in 1998 by Squee Red and Eric Blumrick. The group was composed of people who had spoken up against perversion in the fandom and had been burnt at the stake for it, hence the name of the group. Such as Squee Red, whose burning is similar to that of a comic villain's backstory. You see, Squee Rat was applying for a job, 
They saw the furry artwork in their portfolio, and Squee got turned down due to how the furry fandom was perceived at the time. Thus began the Burned Furs, created because of the Anthropomorphics fandom being overrun by sexually dysfunctional, socially stunted, and creatively bankrupt hacks and pervs, a description that still haunts the minority of the fandom to this very day. Their mission statement, however, is somewhat of a mixed bag to me, especially proposal number two. We strongly discourage the supportive acts such as bestiality, plushophilia, fursuit sex, and other things seen as wrong by non-fandom individuals, known by fans as mundanes. First things first, mundanes? I'm guessing this is supposed to be vanilla or normies, but all that comes to mind hearing mundanes is Garfield. The wrong Garfield. Also, the examples they give here, bestiality, plushophilia, and fursuit sex, one of these is a sin against humanity. A crime that should only be punishable by death. But the other two, as far as these are from being my personal cup of tea, if it's done between consenting adults behind closed doors, there isn't much of a problem with it. You know, as long as you don't mind the two. It will be easier for non-fans to sympathize and identify with anthro art, if these elements are, if not eliminated, then pushed to the far outer fringes and rendered irrelevant to the fandom at large. This essentially says that to make the fandom consisting of banded together, socially incentric outcasts more appealing, you have to outcast the outcasts some more. Again, I can understand that view if we're talking about bestiality, but if no one is being harmed by the activities, is there really a point in fighting against it that adamantly? Some might call me a hypocrite for that, and to that I say, cub through the first punch. Look, you can draw water sports as much as you'd like, but when kids start getting involved with king portrayals, that's when I get pissy. The entire mission statement boils down to essentially, hey, the furry fandom is being plagued with people who have nothing more but big dog mom booba on their mind. They weren't and still aren't wrong about that. But where Burn Furs messed up was their approach to it. Their solution to the overflow of yif and whatnot was to obliterate it all if society saw it as weird and also be homophobic, because they just felt like it, I guess. With something like the furry fandom, you can see how demanding people stop being weird is a bit of a tall order, especially since the fandom has only gone on to expand exponentially. Even after the Burnt Furs got a somewhat better unofficial sequel in the form of what's known as improved anthropomorphics, while Burnt Furs wanted to vivaciously pull anyone who dared to be open about their kinks behind a shed, Improved Anthropomorphics was based on a softer approach, claiming to inspire change from within by setting a good example. Both aimed for the betterment of the fandom image, just in different tones. So I suppose it will make sense that both groups are pretty much defunct today. But if you were to put the burned furs and their rather harsh methods to the side and just look at the ideals, you'd come across a more fitting solution to the issue. In the mission statement it says, if all else fails, and improving the fandom seems impossible or a waste of time, then we shall institute ourselves as an alternative to the mainstream fandom. This might come off as a bit pretentious, given it's just, I'll make my own fandom with blackjack and no hookers, but let me run it by you in a different way. You see, a wise, wise man once said, mankind knew they could not change society. So instead of reflecting on themselves, they blamed the beasts. So what if we didn't attempt to change society? What if we instead made a sub-society that could function with the main one symbiotically? That way we wouldn't have to disturb the beasts. Well, about that. I would like for you to imagine a group. A group where asexuals and children could engage in free fandom activities without the threat of unwanted sexual content getting the jump on them. The Fluffy's fandom strived to be such a group. Now you're probably curious as to what a Fluffy was. Well, a Fluffy was someone who's technically part of the furry community, but mainly indulges in the safe work side. Minors, asexual people with trauma, would fall into this category if they choose to label themselves as a Fluffy. The person behind the Fluffies movement was an underage furry who wanted to create an unsexualized safe work label for minors, asexuals, and people with sexual trauma. They were someone who had adults make sexual remarks towards him and his Sona, all while asking him to draw non-safe work content as a minor. 
Along with the unwanted exposure to sexual materials, he believed that creating this label would assist in defining the boundary between safe for work and not safe for work content. It would allow people to find more safe work spaces without the risk of viewing unwanted NSFW content. He says, The whole purpose was to make a more comfortable environment for people that felt like me, and to help minors not be in not safe for work spaces, or not safe for work being in safe for work spaces. They would create the term fluffy to differentiate the safe for work from the otherwise, a term that also belonged to a My Little Pony gore community at the time. But due to not researching a gore community at the age of 16, the user was far from aware of their existence at first. They simply chose the word fluffy due to how similar it sounded to furry. He didn't want fluffies to be their own spin-off fandom or to impose on the state of the furry community. He wanted it to be an option you could choose in the furry fandom for asexuals, the sex repressed, or anyone who felt safer donning the label. Anyone who wanted a sign that clearly said, Hello, I'd rather you not bring sexual content around me. Thank you. Now, this was being created around the same time Zeus sadists like Kira the Wolf and Wildlife were being outed, as well as other popular artists admitting to their interests in cub, feral, or real animals. Due to this, he wanted people to know that the term fluffy was against these behaviors and materials. Making an official fluffy fandom Twitter page, they would post an emotionally charged thread detailing their disgust with sexual feral material and how the fluffies didn't stand for anything of the sort. They wanted this to come off as the group being anti-zoophile, but because of their wording being chosen by emotions that had yet to mature, this was mentioned among saying the term was SFW only, emphasizing the inherent sex repulsion the term will carry. This resulted in the miners' actions being equated to that of the burnt furs, adult users referring to him as a Puritan and a Nazi for wanting to make a group for people that didn't want to deal with smut. Later days would result in the concept of fluffies being overrun with lies, rumors, and the user behind it, still no minor at the time, receiving harassment in the form of furry smut. This would cause him to deactivate his account and step away from Twitter for the time being. This would stop furries from allegedly going after his non-furry partner in addition to him, calling them a pedophile for their two-year age gap. This made him scared to try and push the label any further. Whenever they tried, they were met with other people calling them any buzzword imaginable for the sole reason of wanting a safer work term. Fast forwarding to the minor being almost 18, they still felt that Fluffies was something needed in the fandom. In this post, they would state that their intention was not to shame not safe work first, or to purify the fandom as others have accused them of doing. It had nothing to do with what consensual adults did in their own spaces. It was about making the safe work side of the fandom a safer environment. They recognize that this isn't a complete fix by any means that there will be those who try to take advantage of those spaces no matter what. But the purpose of this label is that so it can be limited as much as possible, to allow users to feel more comfortable in their own spaces. There would also be a makeshift frequently asked questions section, where he would explain that fluffies don't condone the burnt furs or Nazis, it isn't about being against not safe for work, it's about creating safe spaces for those who want to avoid partaking in not safe for work spaces, that being a fluffy doesn't make you automatically safe from predators, and that the best that can be done is spreading awareness, and that minors aren't the only ones who can be fluffies. They also explain that just calling yourself SFW isn't enough anymore, so the term fluffy would clarify that a user is completely SFW no matter what. They would end by clarifying that fluffy isn't its own fandom, it's a part of the furry community. Regardless of this further elaboration, however, it appears the idea was still drowned under by the majority, labeled as another burned furs type movement, even as the concept of fluffies was laid out and thoroughly explained. I think the reason the fluffy fandom's decline irks me the way that it does is due to just how horrid the entire experience seems in hindsight. I mean, in simple terms, this was the story of a miner who wanted to make a furry space that was safe from having an unwanted meat slap pop up. And it only gets worse when you have ordeals such as the debate around the kink-oriented horse fursuit that occurred after Anthrocon this year. Let me clarify, the problem isn't having a fursuit that aims to bring more of a focus to the chest or thighs. Or whatever the hell else you guys are into. 
The problem shows up when people have issue with the idea of family-friendly cons. Saying that the fandom started out as openly not safe for work friendly isn't an excuse to just throw your kinks into the open. It just makes comments like these more of an eyesore as they'd be funny if they weren't so sad. The group was founded on the idea of making a safe space for those who didn't want to engage in sexual content. It's perhaps the most sensible answer to this issue in the fandom. What better way to keep kids out of adult conversation than by pulling out the goddamn kitty table? And while yes, I am personally torn on the idea of fluffies due to how it could result in miners becoming fish in a barrel when it comes to predators, that also brings up my next point of discussion. It's pretty evident that not safe work content will forever be a portion of the large furry community. A group that overlaps with multiple other groups is bound to have something for everyone. And the overlap with the LGBT guarantees that there's no shortage of sex positivity in our group. However, I don't want you to believe that I'm equating sex positivity to being overly sexual, as they're two different things. Sex positivity is accepting whatever your sexuality may be, be it gay, lesbian, pan, bi, ace, etc. It'll be accepted and seen as valid. When you're overly sexual, you're still celebrating the validation of your sexual orientation, you're just celebrating it through constant sexual fornication, to the point where you find it being your only personality trait. You know the ones I'm referring to, the ones when being prideful about their sexuality, decide to take it a step further and make every interaction they have and every piece of media they take in and consume revolve around being sexual. Ones who probably have a crop porn profile picture and message you with nothing but hi looking for a roleplay when you're a YouTuber who is very vocal about how oversexuality is claim the fandom, but I digress. The fandom isn't overrun by sexual content, mind you, but it is a very prominent component. As there are some in the fandom who have nothing on their mind other than sex and where they're going to get their next quick burst of dopamine, it is rather hard for a minor or even a sex repulsed asexual to engage with the fandom without having to come across some kind of fuck smut. And as time has shown, you can't forcefully outcast people who indulge in sexual content to the outskirts of a fandom made by social outcasts for social outcasts. And similarly, you can't create a subsection of the fandom where you and others don't indulge in sexual content for whatever reason. So that only leaves the option of taking things into your own hands. By doing whatever you see fit to not engage with not safe work content in the fandom, the simpler of these solutions being to just not engage with it. While this is the most baseline of a solution you can get, it is a good structure to build off of, in addition to utilizing whatever website provides you with to keep your safe work piece of the internet safe. However, we have to remind ourselves that this is the internet, and nothing here is ever sacred. I'm saying this to accent that nothing is foolproof when it comes to content moderation on the internet. Some things will most certainly slip through the cracks. Predators and other sick individuals will attempt to prey on you. And no matter how safe or work the source material may be, no matter if the creator is a minor or someone who's sex repulse, some people just can't help themselves. I'm not saying this to say that it's inevitable or safe work spaces don't exist. I'm bringing this up because there are two words that make all the difference in situations like these. Internet safety. I'm sure a number of people are probably already aware, but you are not invincible on the internet. And when it comes to creating safe spaces, you are at the first line of defense when it comes to blocking out what you don't wish to experience. A strong personal defense from the material will allow you to create stronger defenses on top of that. Things that might come to mind in a general sense would be a VPN, not revealing your personal information, you know, the basic stuff. So while sounding obvious to some, and like a sponsor's segue to others, there are a number out there who don't tread the internet with their personal safety in mind. Leaving that incidents that happen to other people online will happen to them because they're the special golden good boy with plot armor aplenty. Sure, someone else was taken advantage of in the fandom, but I'm not them. I'm built differently. What are the odds it'll happen to me, right? And then you lose your first suit to a Nigerian prince. No matter your age or walk of life, being careful on the internet and fine-tuning your online experience to suit your wishes will do wonders for you, even if it may not keep everything from slipping in. On the internet, there are too many factors to account for when it comes to pretty much anything, content curation included. 
I personally believe that the Fluffy fandom had the right steps in mind when it comes to approaching not safe work material in the fandom, at least going by the explanation here rather than the misconceptions that were spread at the time, because they totally owned those lamers by sending furry porn to a minor that was trying to make a section of the fandom where coming across porn in the fandom would be less of an issue. It's not like that totally reinforced their point or anything, right dumbass? I think most new viewers will probably pick up my tone in this video, and let me just confirm that thought here. I think that the fandom has an overarching issue of oversexualization. Like I said before, I don't believe we should obliterate not safe for our content, but we should have a better approach when it comes to how our community upholds itself. Because of how some of our members behave, we appear to be a fandom that just mindlessly rewards being sexual. From the positives, such as validating a member's sexuality, to those who are just overtly horny, and even those have spectrums all their own. But the point still stands that in a community that exuberantly celebrates pride, we leave ourselves open to horn dogs tagging along for the ride and shifting the community to the point that furry content creators are incentivized to use crop porn for video thumbnails and draw big-titted men and women because sex sells, much more so among furries. Now, in response to this, I always get two arguments. One being that the furry fandom started out as a sexual thing, and that furry being equatable to a kink is just something you have to deal with. To that I say, it doesn't fucking have to be. I mean, we're not still burning witches, so why is this where the line in the sands of history is drawn? Just because something was a certain way in the past doesn't mean you can't evolve into something better as time moves on. Another argument I get to this is more of a deflection. That the furries aren't the only ones with asexual parts of their fandom, which... What does that have to do with us? Since when do communities have to base their behaviors on others? It's like if some Genshin Impact fan started drawing loot art of Klee, so furries took a look at Bluey and decided to... Holy fucking shit, hold on a second. The thing is, just because other fandoms have issues with their not safe for communities at times, doesn't mean we had to. And speaking of dream stands, only a small percentage of his audience drew graphic smut of those involved in the SMP saga. If those fans are jumping off a bridge, in Minecraft, does the furry fandom really have to follow suit? Evidently yes, but we shouldn't. What I'm trying to say with all this is that we don't have to stick firmly to the idea that the fandom is inherently sexual, nor do we have to follow the bad habits of other fandoms. If you see something getting out of hand on your side of things, you should do your part to deal with it so your side of the fandom doesn't have to suffer. Maybe others will take notice and follow by example. Maybe not, who knows. And I think that's what the main takeaway from all this should really be. <sighs> yes, the fandom does have an over-sexualization issue. One I talked about before with a friend of mine on her channel. But the thing is, talking about it won't really do much. And as I've come to terms with that, I've grown more of an apathetic view towards the state of the fandom as a whole. I still want those in it to feel safe and informed of the scum lurking around or sometimes even being one of the higher ups in terms of influencer standards. But when you stick around long enough to see not only history repeat itself, but for hypocrisy to kick down your door, grab you by the neck, spit in your mouth and scuff your fake Jordans, it starts to whittle away at your hope that things will actually work themselves out. In the end, removing not safe work content from the free fandom is just as impossible now as it was then. And there may never be a label for members of the fandom who want to engage with the safe work portions of the fandom only. All you can do in the end is moderate what you come across to the best of your ability. Put a do not interact in your bio or just block and mute not safe work accounts so you don't see them. Whatever works for you at the end of the day. Just know that if all else fails, you can still take your personal content moderation into your own hands. Just like you can consider liking or disliking the video. Maybe even subscribing to see any of the new content I put out, or even donating to my Kofi to do a good deed for the day. But until that happens, remember to keep your wits about you, and to stay safe out there.